right? So first, uh, I'm going to begin with definition of uh, definitions of health and illness. Uh, in 1946, the World Health Organization provided uh, this definition okay, about health. Health refers to a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmities. So here, I highlight a couple of key words in this definition. So first is a complete okay, health. Second, uh, a key point that I did not highlight in green here is it's not just about physical health because when we talk about health, it's almost always about physical health. No, not, not necessarily. And uh, for the most part, that's not true. Health also entails mental and social well-being, uh, the other two components, okay? And it's not merely the absence, not just the absence of disease or infirmity. So infirmity a lot of times refers to uh, weakness uh, associated with senility, okay? uh, being an, uh, you know, uh, at the last age. Uh, so on that account, actually I can claim that everyone to some extent is sick, right? Is sick, because it has to be complete not just merely absence of disease or infirmity. And the key words here in this definition probably uh, would entail uh, things not mentioned, but uh, connotated uh, would be function, happiness, and probably even dignity because uh, this definition gets into what? Social well-being and mental well-being, okay? Second, definition by Blackster providing in um, his work published in 2010. What is health? Health refers to being healthy, okay? And it's not just about physical, physically fit, uh, but also having good relationships, right? With friends and family, being able to function or doing things and having a sense of well-being. So a couple of keywords here um, that uh, used or uh, hinted at include first is good relationship, right? And good relationship serves as basis for a lot of times um, um, good mental health, right? And second is uh, function or the lack thereof. So here we're talking about possibly uh, functional limitations or the lack thereof. Right, and third one uh, is not explicitly mentioned, uh, but it could include things like happiness, right, self-esteem. Because here, definition includes having a sense of well-being, right, well-being. Okay, and the third definition about health is provided by uh, Dubo in 1981. And uh, here, just one focus, right? Emphasis is on what? Function only. Health can be defined as the ability to function. On that account, if someone can function well, and regardless of his uh, or her physical, mental well being, measured by any kind of objective uh, measurements or devices, still we can claim that person to be healthy, right? So the key word is function. Also, we can get into uh, definitions provided uh, another scholar, uh, McCune, in 1979. Uh, this scholar uh, laid out a couple points talking about um, health and well-being. Okay? And uh, uh, this scholar argues that it is about feelings of well-being, okay, uh, more than perceived absence of disease and disability. So that aligns well with the definition provided by uh, World Health Organization. And also, this scholar argues that uh, social, religious, economic, personal, and medical inferences, all these 
social factors, okay, or social determinants actually contribute to such feelings. So health is about feelings of well-being, okay? And also medicine's task is not to create happiness, okay? But remove a major source of unhappiness, disease and disability from people's lives. So remove disease and disability, secure people of disease, okay? Um, so this definition to some extent is restrictive because a lot of times, especially for chronic conditions, uh, Madison's task is to let people live with these conditions, okay? Not necessarily remove, okay? Okay, then what is illness? According to Cockerham, okay? Refers to a state or condition of suffering as a result of a disease or a sickness. Okay? And uh, usually modern scientific uh, science views illness as a couple of keywords, abnormal biological affliction. So it is abnormal, deviates from uh, normal conditions. Now what is normal can be relatively subjective. Right? Um, and the, the definitions or of norm or normality can vary over time because of multiple factors, sometimes uh, due to medical advances, right? Or mental abnormality. So it includes both biological and mental with here. A cause. So we got these conditions got to be abnormal biological affliction as a cause with symptoms and a treatment, okay? So that's an illness. Now, on that account, uh, some health conditions, for example, IBS is irritable bowel syndrome, okay? Is it abnormal? Yeah, it is abnormal. Is that biological affliction? Uh, probably to some extent, but it's unknown. With a cause, but again, cause is unknown. Symptoms, yeah, a cluster of symptoms such as diarrhea, constipation, just discomfort with uh, stomach or in general digestive contract, uh, excuse me, tracts, right? And a method of treatment. Well, is there a treatment? Yeah, it's kind of iffy, not very effective. So on that account, IBS probably, you know, uh, does not necessarily uh, relate to or, you know, could be defined as an illness, okay? And uh, uh, physician and um, medical scholar uh, Marshall Maringer in 1975 uh, provided uh, or defined uh, what is called three modes of unhealth getting to a bit of definitions of illness uh, broadly defined, right? Including disease, illness, and sickness, okay? So what is disease? Disease is a pathological process, most often physical as in throat infection or breast prostate cancer. Uh, it corresponds to the quality which identifies disease is some deviation from a biological norm, okay? And uh, it is relatively, uh, you know, kind of objective. That is, can be detected, measured, uh, diagnosed with uh, medical equipment, uh, or sometimes, you know, to a lesser degree, let's say questionnaire, questionnaire, as long as there are uh, stringent standards there. So, it, so here, disease, uh, talks about some biological deviance or deviation. And, um, you know, uh, to a great extent, it is about malfunction or dysfunction with one or multiple organs of our body. So here, when we use the term disease, to some extent, uh, we adopt uh, the mechanical uh, approach to health. That is, we view human body as a machine. And, uh, it, it, it's because some parts of that machinery uh, fails to function, then we have disease. 
So some organs, right? So it's biological, it's as, uh, as, as deviation, and it is local to, uh, you know, a single organ, a malfunctioning single organ or multiple organs, okay? Second is illness. Illness is a feeling. It is an experience. It's condition of unhealth and suffering, okay? So illness is something that needs to be managed, such as feelings of pain, discomfort, distress, weakness, fatigue, et cetera. And sometimes it can be associated with disease and other times not necessarily. So sometimes it can be detected objectively by some medical uh, devices, you know, let's say, you know, by measuring, uh, you know, um, blood sugar or, you know, heartbeat or uh, blood pressure, uh, things along that line. But other times, not necessarily. So it, it's a subjective, it's a personal feeling as opposed to what? Uh, a biological deviation for disease. So it is interior and it is personal. Okay. Now, what about sickness? Now, when uh, someone uh, approaches me and uh, indicates that, uh, you know, uh, he or she is sick, and, you know, I would take that as a, you know, kind of cue uh, for negotiation. Okay. So sickness refers to this external and public mode of un unhealth. Now, sickness is a social role, uh, uh, and uh, it is derived through negotiation. So it is a negotiated position in the world, in the world, okay? 